Tiger King. Oh man. Babe, can you check out the recycling? But I'm watching Tiger King. I wanna. Please. But it's Tiger King. <sighs> I wish I had a clone. You're. You're me. <laughs> Okay, we don't want to get confused. Let me see that face. Oh, this is great. Okay, um, so you go take out the recycling and I'm gonna watch Tiger King. Okay, bye. <laughs> hey, old people are nuts, man. And I might be one of them people, I don't know. But they're all half out there, man, they're crazy. Just when you thought that one of me was too much, I go ahead and clone myself. Hey guys, Nathan here, and that's what we're talking about today, clones. One of the easiest effects you can do that follows one simple rule, don't change anything. But the second you start to break that rule, things become a little bit more complicated. In case you missed it, my latest music video with Problematic dropped today, and you can check that out down in the description here. And it's all about someone talking to themselves and the good and the bad thoughts that they have in their mind. And today, I'm gonna show you how to clone yourself with three different scenarios. We have the easiest, where nothing changes. We have the, the medium situation where the lights will change a little bit and then the hardest where the camera is moving. But before we get into that, be sure to hit that like button down there and get subscribed for lots more videos like this. Anyway, let's get into it. So here we are in DaVinci Resolve and this effect can totally be done in the free version. Now we just have our audio track here and what we wanna do is we wanna bring in both of our video tracks that we're gonna clone. So we have everything synced up and just to show you, you see all the waveforms match up. So we're gonna zoom out and I'm just gonna shrink everything so that it kinda is the same size so that it makes moving around easy peasy. So now that we have that done, we're going to alt drag and we're just gonna delete these extra audio tracks. I'm then also going to link all the clips together so that when I wanna grab them, they act as one big unit. So we're gonna go into this first shot here into our color page and now I'm just gonna add a new node, and this is the easiest effect you'll ever do. We're gonna go into Windows, Pen Tool, gonna zoom out a little bit, draw a little box here, and then we go over here, we right click, add alpha output, and then take this little blue sucker, drag it over, and boom. It is literally just that easy. And you just create an imaginary line kind of in the middle of the frame or wherever you have your two characters. As long as no one crosses that line, it's super easy. But if someone does cross the line, you can always track it and go frame by frame to add specific animations if let's say someone's hand goes over or whatever you need to cover. So that's the best possible situation. In a light controlled room where nothing is changing except where the actor is located but it can get a little bit more difficult. So here is the second last shot of the skip from the beginning. And you can see we have both of our tracks here. Now we're gonna go back in to the color page. We're gonna try the same thing. So we're gonna grab this window here and we're gonna just do this and then add our alpha output. Oh, we already have one, great. Take it, drag it over and boom. So now we see this, but if I just deselect this here. So if we zoom in here, you can tell that the light actually doesn't match. Because we were dealing with an open window in the few seconds that it took from getting this shot to getting this shot, obviously something changed with the sky. Maybe a cloud flew overhead or something changed. So I had a feeling this would be a problem and this is why if you notice the clone never crosses this line. So we can zoom out and let's just make it so that our line between the two clips is on an actual line in the frame, like a wall or something. Now, we get out of there, zoom in. You can't tell the difference at all. So because of that wall, it does do a pretty good job, but if we zoom down to the floor, we do notice a little bit of a problem here. Obviously, the recycling bag is there and the light is a little bit different on the floor. So what we can do to fix that 
is we're going to move back over and we're going to zoom, go up here. And now we're just going to add a little bit of blurring and we're just going to get soft on the edges of this. And now that gradation is so much more subtle and you don't see the cans or anything at the bottom. It's just a lot more subtle. So that's a slightly different lighting situation. Though it can get way more complicated with lighting. But how do we introduce movement? So this is where things can get pretty complicated. And one thing humans don't do very well is repetitive motions. You can move your hand from one side to the other and it may feel like you did it the exact same way, but I can guarantee you didn't. And there's slight movements that'll be introduced with every time you're gonna move your hand back and forth. Even if you have the camera on a tripod and you're trying to slowly pan like I did in the beginning, I can almost guarantee you're gonna have a bad time. This is where robots come in handy. But believe it or not, I don't have money for any fancy robots, but I do have a gimbal. So I have the DJI Ronin S. It allows you to use your phone as kind of a remote control for the gimbal. So what you can do is you can turn off the tilt and the roll axis so you just are left with pan. I then set it to a constant speed and then just held my thumb so that it was moving right. But as a side note, I did kind of screw up because I kept pressing the record button on the camera for each different shot and just my hand touching the gimbal caused it to move ever so slightly to introduce some errors later on. So I'd highly recommend if you can use some type of phone app for your camera to turn it on and off just so you're never touching anything because we don't want anything with the camera to change. So once you've done a couple rotations and you have all your shots, I recommend finding a frame of reference. So we're gonna use this bookshelf here. So if we go between the shots, you see the little bit of change I talked about. That's just for my fingers, literally touching the record button and causing the gimbal to move a little bit. But we still have a consistent frame of reference, which is great for each of the different shots. So now that the shots all start from the same kind of reference point, you wanna cut off each clip when you don't see the character or any changes anymore. Now in this particular shot, I go to here because if we go back a couple frames and disable this, you can see that I accidentally left the whale on top of the couch, so try not to do that. Anyway, we're gonna go to our end of our clip there and we do the same with each of these shots. So as soon as the broom guy can't be seen, we got the Tiger King guy and then we got the ukulele guy. So now we're gonna go into the color page and we're gonna do just what we've done before. Go into our window tab and grab our little pen tool here. We're then just gonna make a simple mask, kind of in the middle. It's fine to be in the middle here. And what I wanna do right in the beginning, okay, great. You can already see the broom guy, but if we click off here, you can see that because of those little adjustments, anything involving a line is gonna cause us some problems. So one way to help deal with this is like what we did before, just kinda soften the outside and the inside a little bit to make that change less noticeable. So as you can see, it is better, but I'm gonna be real with you, this is not perfect. I'm actually hoping to try this effect again right after recording this, and if it works out, you'll see it at the end of the video. So hopefully look forward to that, and if you didn't see it, it didn't work. <laughs> Nathan from the future here, and it did work. It actually worked so well that I figured I'd set all my camera stuff up again and re-record the last part of the tutorial because I feel like I have a better system figured out. And the first one I did for the skit was a great learning process, but this one actually shows off how to do things well and how to plan and do it a bit better. So if we go into the clip here, we have our reference point and I can turn off each shot. And as you can see, it does actually change with each shot. So this is on the Ronin S, maybe it's an off balance thing, but I didn't even touch that sucker and we still had some slight movements, but they're significantly less than when I did it the first time. So now what we wanna do is we wanna go through here and we just wanna get to a point where the character is no longer in frame. Okay, and that's where we're gonna end each clip. So same as last time, but what we're also gonna do is we want the underlying frame to be the same thing the whole time. So everything that isn't cut out, we want to be the same thing. So what we can do is like this frame doesn't need to start till about here. And then this next frame, um, 
because it's a shot of her in the chair. This doesn't need to start till about here. So we have our starting points for our clips and we're gonna leave this bottom one the same all the way through because we want the least amount of things changing in the shot so that there's limited amounts of jankiness. Usually on this channel, I embrace the jank, but for this situation, you wanna minimize jankiness. So we wanna go into our first shot here into the color page. We already have our alpha output set up and now we want to just go into the middle, kinda sorta, grab our pen tool and do what we've always done. Okay, we're gonna soften that sucker a bit and now we're gonna track it. So we're gonna track in the left direction, perfect. Track in the right direction. Great. The only thing I do see a bit of trouble with is a bit with this lamp. Um, I know that's gonna be a trouble point because if we go over top of it, you can see that it kind of doubles and it's kind of weird. So even with the Ronin, you still want to have your cut point at kind of mellow areas, like something with a wall, something without a ton of lines going on, not a complicated part of your image. So I think that's going to look better. And we go back to the beginning. Perfect. We can then go ahead to the next shot. And at this point, it's basically kind of a rinse and repeat. So we're going to disable our first shot for a second here, go into this next one, get into the middle, and it's just do the same thing all over again. We're gonna grab a pen tool, put a little rectangle around her. Now, I'm already breaking one of my rules, as you can tell. We don't want it to be on the couch. We want it to be over here on the wall because we don't wanna deal with all those lines. So, then we're gonna soften it out just a little bit. We're then going to track this. Track backwards, be kind to us. Okay, so that's not bad, but we can see the track ends because it has no info to track. So we can just go into frame and go a couple over and just move that like so. So now we stick in here, we can go in here and we're gonna finish the track, go back to clip. Let's see how this finishes out. Great, and I'm gonna go to frame and I'm just gonna hide this little bit at the end here. Let's see how that looks. Okay, it looks almost good. We're just gonna go near the end, bring it in just a little bit so that it hides it at the end. And it's basically a rinse and repeat, but just for kicks, I'll show you the final one. It's her lounging here at the computer. So again, we're just gonna draw our window sucker. At this point, I feel like you could probably do it in your sleep. And go down, boom. Got another window. And we're just gonna soften this thing out again. Same thing every time. Track it. And then we can track the other way too. Try not to cut off any toes in the process. Now you have your shots all tracked and all on top of each other. Now for some icing on the cake, if you notice this first shot is actually pretty bright in comparison to these ending shots. So what I did was I created an adjustment clip and I just keyframed it. So it starts off being normal with no adjustments made and then it ends being quite a bit brighter. It's weird the adjustments aren't showing up here but I did increase the gain quite a bit. You can see as I turn it off, as I turn it back on again, it does have quite a change. So you can always keyframe correctors on an adjustment just to keep the exposure a little more level. And then I just bump the shot up a little because I'm adding some black bars just to help hide any kind of tearing and weird things that we get on these higher lines here. And boom, that's the final shot. So back to past Nathan to close out the video. So anyway, that's an easy way of doing the clone effect in DaVinci Resolve without any green screen or fancy things like that. And I showed you it in three different ways. So hopefully you can use it in your projects and find a solution that works best for you. So if you like this video, be sure to hit that button. And if you didn't like it, you can hit the dislike button too. And if you want to see more videos like this, be sure to get subscribed for lots more. Anyway, folks, have yourself a good one. Okay, bye. 
Also, if the shot worked out, here it is right now. Okay, bye for real this time. Bye.